In this video, we're going to complete the sum of numbers project. In our first part of the video, we added a while loop in order to repeat another set of numbers, and we used a for loop in order to keep a running total of numbers typed in by the user. If you did not catch the first part of this video, you could click the link in the upper part of the screen or the link in the description below. In this video, we're going to add a while loop in order to validate the user's input. We're going to advance our prompts when we ask the user for a number, and we're also going to make our printout a little bit nicer looking, a little bit more user friendly. So on line 10, we're going to enter a series of three lines that are going to act as our input validation. And this is going to be done by using a while loop. So you can see that we have our while loop. And we are testing answer to see if it's not equal to capital Y and if answer is not equal to capital N. This is going to guarantee that the user types in a capital Y or N when we're asking them if they want to enter another set of numbers. If they do not enter a capital Y or capital N, they're going to get an error message, and then we're going to ask them to enter their input again. And this is going to keep going over and over again until they actually type in a capital Y or capital N. If they type in a capital Y, answer is going to be recorded as capital Y. It's going to exit this nested loop. It's going to go back to the outside loop, and Y is going to be a true condition. It's going to run our program again by calling the calc function. If they type in a capital N, we're going to exit this nested loop. We're going to be back into the outer loop where it's going to be a false condition, and it's going to skip the calculation function and jump to line 14 and say, thanks for using my program. So let's take a look at that in action. Do I want to add another set of numbers? I'm going to say yes, capital Y. How many numbers would I like to add? I'll just do two again. Do I want to enter another set of numbers? I'm going to type in a capital N, and thanks for using my program. So that's where we're at so far. Okay, so you see that does work with capital N and capital Y. It does repeat when we want to repeat, and it does end when we want to end. We're going to run this again to see what happens if we type in a lowercase. So I'm going to type in a lowercase y this time. And there's my error message. Okay, do I want to type another set? Yes, I do, lowercase. Again, error message. And this will keep going on until the person using our program types in a capital Y, and then we're going to move on to the program. So that's input validation. Next thing I want to do is look at cleaning up our output. So down on line 24. So is this a good output statement? Yes, it's pretty good. It's on the basic level, but it's pretty good. We want to make this a little bit more user friendly. Take it up to a second level. And the way we're going to do that is replace this with a more advanced look and we're going to use the actual number that the user typed in inside our output statement. So this looks a little bit better. The total of your blank numbers is total. So whatever the user types in, they're going to see that. So this is a little bit nicer looking than just printing out your total is. Now the last section we're going to look at is we're going to make our prompts a little bit more user-friendly. And this is all going to happen right here on line 20. So what I need to do is replace line 20 with a series of if elifs. So you can see the line was replaced. Now we have lines 20 through 27 that are replacing that one line. So let's go down line by line and take a look at what's happening. So we're going to test our target variable to see if it's a 1, which that's the very first thing it should be. And if it is, we're going to ask the user to enter their first number. When the target variable is a 2, we're asking them to enter their second number. But notice how we're also using the target variable inside the prompt. 
Keep in mind that the prompt has to be a string. So I had to convert this counter value, which was either a one, two, three, four, five, into a string in order to use it here. And I repeat the process all the way down. Now don't forget that we have total is equal to 0, 0.0, so that means I'm going to accept float as input. So I want to make sure that I also have float as my input data type. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so with all the float data types in front of my input, my matching parentheses at the end, I'm ready for the final piece of the puzzle. And this is more of a shortcut than anything. I want to use the augment to assignment operator to replace the value total with just the plus equals. Okay, so it's basically just a shortcut and it's optional, but it is a sign of an intermediate level programmer. So there you have it. Let's take a look at this in action. Okay, so now we're running this and I'm gonna type in some more numbers this time. I wanna do seven. Enter your first number one, second number. I'm just gonna keep doing one all the way down, but I want you to notice how it is saying, enter your first number, enter your second, enter your third, enter your fourth, enter your fifth, enter your sixth, enter your seventh. And now I should hit enter and see my total of seven. Do you want to add another number set? Yes, I do, but I'm putting in a lowercase to test my input validation. So when I typed in a Y, I got this error message. That was my input validation. Don't want to add another set of numbers. I, I'm going to hit a capital no this time. Thanks for using my program. So you can see it does work. So one last summary of the sum of numbers. We're uh, using a while loop to repeat the program. We're using a nested while loop to validate the user input. We have a calc function that's going to use a for loop to keep a running total of the numbers. We're using an advanced prompt by actually using the target variable inside the prompt. We're using an augmented assignment operator on line 28 to keep a running total, and we're doing a nice user-friendly output on line 31. The sum of numbers program. Until next time.